We can just chat. You can look at them. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Maggie and we're on another episode of SRH Access Facebook Live. As you can see, we're outside on this beautiful day at Scottish Rite Hospital and I'm here with our Director of Recreational Therapy, Hi, Dana Depsey. Um, so we're excited to be here and today we're going to talk about the department and give you a show and tell of a lot of our adaptive equipment. So to get started, Dana, what is therapeutic recreation? Well, therapeutic recreation is a modality that uses a variety of recreation and leisure activities as interventions to try to help the individual become as independent and actively involved in recreation, leisure, sports, games. Awesome. And just a reminder, we are taking live questions, so if you need to post any, post below, and we'll make sure that Dana gets to those. So how does the service help our patients? Well, basically, we help make sure that the children have the skills and the knowledge they need to be independently involved in activities when they're at home. Children don't live in a hospital, they live at home in their communities. Right. So we want to make sure that when they go home, that they can go and play and be involved with family and friends. So I know a lot of this, you know, you're training the, the child on how to use this equipment. Sure. But what is the involvement of parents? Because obviously they have to be a big um, um, help in this when they're going home, right? Absolutely. I've never seen a 10-year-old drive themselves to <laughs> tennis lesson. Right. So essentially you have two audiences. You have the child and you have the parent. And what we want to make sure that we do is help the parent understand the importance of that child being involved in recreation and leisure activities. Help educate them about what's available in their community, whether it's inclusive or adapted programs that their child can be involved in. That's great. And I know at Scottish Rite Hospital we see a very variety of patient populations. So in your time here, what is the most popular patient population that really utilizes uh, this adaptive equipment? Well, it really is across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of children with spina bifida, a lot of children with cerebral palsy, of course a lot of orthopedic conditions, whether it's scoliosis or hip disorders or potentially missing a limb. Uh, so it really is a wide gamut of children. Awesome. And I know before we were talking about adaptive equipment, but a lot of people watching probably don't really know what that is. So could you kind of define adaptive equipment before we kind of go to the show and tell? Sure. Adaptive equipment really is piece of equipment that's modified so that an individual with a limitation is able to participate. It kind of removes that limitation. It, it removes that barrier. Mm -hmm. So for example, some of the modified equipment or adapted equipment might be something, let's say, for golf, potentially, right. uh, where it's a flat lie club or something to help them hold on to the club better. Um, and so, or a, a device that might help them maneuver around the course. So really adapted equipment can be a wide category right. of things. I'll show you a little bit later just a simple card holder that's a piece of adaptive equipment but I'm sure somebody invented that in their basement right. you yeah. know because need is the mother of invention Definitely. and so people come up with these ideas of ways to modify things so that their children or they themselves can be involved in activities. That's so great. I know some of your staff is here today. Sure. Um, so they're both recreational therapists. So can you yes. give insight into what they do and how they help our patients? Well, both of them, Elena and Mackenzie, um, within our department there are three of us, myself and Elena and Mackenzie, and we cover the services for the hospital. So that may involve inpatients where we'll get an order from the physician, conduct our assessment, provide the interventions, you create your care plan, Okay, mm -hmm. what are you going to do while the child's inpatient? Right. And, and then provide the actual services, provide the games and activities and the interventions while they're here. The other thing that they do is they work with the patients and families down in the ambulatory care clinics. In that area, that's a lot of leisure education because the clinic visits are a short amount of time where the family may identify, I really want my child to be involved in an adapted sport or an activity, right. to be able to ride a bike with the family and friends. So we go down, do an evaluation. This too requires a physician order, right. but we go down and do an evaluation and be able to help the family identify what's available in their own hometown. Sometimes, we're able to do that right away. 
sometimes it requires us to go back to our, our office, mm -hmm. spend time on the computer and on the phone, right. making calls, looking for the communities, because we serve kids, as you know, not only yeah, now yeah. from around Texas, but really from around the world. Right. And so we're looking for resources and educating the family, following up with them to say, okay, let's say you live in McAllen, Texas. Mm -hmm. These are the activities based on what you've told us your child's interests are and what their abilities are. These are activities that match up well for their ability and for their interest so and, that they can be engaged. And that's what's so cool is that it's a very, you know, it's this whole child approach that we're always talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. But I mean, you're really trying to look at what the child needs and what their interests are and, you know, make that happen. For sure. Them. You know, that's the one thing that I love about working here at Scottish Rite. Yeah. And that is, we really do look at the whole child. Right. You know, so that we understand that children, they're engaged in play. They want to be involved in school and activities. Mm -hmm. That is so much of what we do right. growing up. Mm -hmm. And if that child has to sit on the sidelines for whatever reason, they're not going to develop the same skills right. as the child, regardless of whether they have a chronic health care condition or not, mm -hmm. but they wouldn't necessarily develop the same skills as that child actively engaged. Right. You think about it, how often children don't learn how to communicate, or children do learn how to communicate through their games and activities, you know, who's going to be the leader and right. follow the leader, yeah. who's going to be the coach, yeah. who's going to be the rule follower, right. and who's going to try to slide it. Yeah. You know, so you really take a look at how they play and watch them grow. And really, if you looked back, even at several adults, you could probably think of them as a child and right. see some of yes. their behaviors. Right. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's social skills, it's leadership, it's motor skills. There's just mm -hmm. so much that goes into it. Absolutely. And such a great service that we provide to our patients here. I think it's fabulous. Hey, it's not, I mean, we're out in this beautiful <laughs> weather. What's cooler than that? Exactly. But let's get to the show and tell. Sure. Because we have a lot of cool things to show. Sure. So we're actually going to get to golfing first. Um, with Elena and then we'll kind of move from there. Yeah, here at Scottish Right we have our Learn to Golf program and over the years it's been designed so that our patients can be introduced to the game of golf and then get connected and participate in golf. So some of our children need to have adapted equipment. Many do not, but some do and so golf is one of those games that because it will accommodate a wide range of abilities it makes sense to introduce the child to the game of golf because it's a lifetime game. So, Elena, this is Elena Ossicker. She is uh, going to demonstrate the use of a paragolfer. This was actually donated to the hospital several years ago. And it is a device that is meant to allow a person with a mobility impairment to not only get around the course, but to also play either from a seated or a standing position. So, Elena is using a flat light club. Uh, it happens to be a, a, the company that makes the flat lie components are called bang uh, pickles custom golf was the one who actually put the club together for us so that we could use it we need to stand back because that's okay. a long swing okay. and so she's going to take a few swings from the paragolfer you'll see that her knees are strapped in so that she's got the support you also have a seat belt a chest harness what she has on her right hand is what's called a stabilizer glove it allows an individual who may have a weak grip the ability to actually hold on to the club a little better. Many of our children who have CP mm -hmm. and they have weakness on one side. The stabilizer glove gives that little extra confidence level. Yeah. Because if you're worried that club's going to go flying, mm -hmm. how concentrating are you on right. hitting the hitting ball? The ball? <laughs> right. right. So she's going to take a few swings here. She's got the strap over to help hold. Nice swing. Adjustments. adjustments, absolutely. And I will tell you, you know, she brings up the word adjustment. Mm -hmm. So many times there is not an if this, then that right. type of formula. Right. There's there no is, algorithm for there's this. There's not. There's not a recipe. Right. So many times people do need to experiment, right. play around to see what works best for their child. Elena, if you would, go ahead and uh, stand up and let's use a regular club. May I have the flat lie club? Thanks. You'll notice that the flat lie club ends up having, what? well, a flatter lie. <laughs> so the person seated 
is able to have the club face level on the ground, whereas a standing player needs a different angle at this portion, which is the hosel. So since she's standing up, the paragolfer allows her to go to a standing position while being safe, while being held in here, the seat belt, and then the chest harness. So she'll take a couple of half swings. And just to let you know, yeah. we're using almost golf balls. Almost they golf are balls. a short flight ball that okay. can be safely used. We use those here at the hospital all the okay. time uh, because it's not going to cause injury if right. it hits somebody or bust out a car window. Okay. So I really encourage families when they're going to have their children practice at home, yeah. if they're not going to a range, okay. some of our families don't have that ability, you can go to uh, your local golf store mm -hmm. or go online look up almost golf balls okay pickles custom golf sells the almost golf balls but that is something that is safe but flies true wiffle balls don't really fly so true yeah. and it's yeah. frustrating right. so this is something that is now on the market that works really well and, cool. and we use it a lot now a couple other pieces of equipment Maggie do you mind holding yep. this for those individuals who say are missing a limb mm -hmm. and they want to be able to hold on to the club, this is a terminal device, a prosthetic device used for a child with a hand difference. Let's say they don't have the hand at the end. Okay. So this would strap on and then, do you mind holding yep. the almost golf ball? What the individual is able to do is to guide this through the shaft here so that then once their wrist is connected here they are able to use both arms to swing wow that way they have an option of whether they want to learn to become a one-arm swinger or use both arms right and a lot of people just don't think about you know the little just a just a small adjustment that can sure. really make it such a difference sure this is a good example of a putter that has a swivel head to it so you could play from a standing position a seated position right or left-handed and many of our kids they like to do a hockey grip kind oh. of a split grip okay. something like this from seated to putt. So by having this custom made with a split grip, it accommodates that. So I think a lot of times people see a picture mm -hmm. of a piece of equipment, a golf club, and they right. think that's the only way it can be, right. when it's not. Right. It can well, be a lot of different ways. We just showed you four different options. And this, again, modifying, this was just a, 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 a shaft, that this is a, a this actually hold. do you have that golf ball? Yep. Actually holds the golf ball so that once you put the tee in the ground, you can then just set it up on that. Wow. Okay. And let's say once you've made your putt, you simply go in and pick up the putt. So especially somebody who has a mobility impairment or right. let's say you just got a bad back. Yes. <laughs> you know, it allows you to be able to not have to do as much bending. That's so awesome. there are different pieces of equipment out on the market that could be used, whether it's made, again, Pickles Custom Golf did that for mm -hmm. me, or this comes off the market, you know, similar type of thing. Right. You could just add the ball retriever at the okay. end. So those are some examples of some things that cool. are used for, for golf. golf. Uh huh. So what's next? Let's go to, to sure. tennis, right? Yes. Now the grip aid or the stabilizer glove mm -hmm. that we use can also be used for not only golf but could be used for other sports or other activities. Mackenzie, this is Mackenzie Summers, she is showing, <laughs> she is our tennis model here. So notice how the strap helps to hold on uh, and help hold the grip for the tennis racket. You know, you could really use that for so many different right. activities, anything that you have to hold a grip. Mm -hmm. um, also, Mackenzie, do you mind showing s some of the different foam balls? We have different types of tennis balls. Okay. There are foam tennis balls so that they fly slower. Okay. Okay. Uh, it, a nice bounce, mm -hmm. but then you also have a foam ball that has bells in it. And what are th and what's the bell? What does that do for? Well, for those who have low vision. Okay. 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 And they're able to also track and sound. Okay. Out here in the court with all the extra s right. noise, no, right. it would be a little difficult. Right. But that is something that you can train to learn to hear the bell. That's okay. Awesome. And then you also have other tennis balls. The one in her right hand is a uh, no pressure ball. Again, it's just a slower ball, so that people who are new. To the uh, sport, it's a good thing I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I attempted to catch yeah, and didn't okay. make it. I'm glad that was off camera. And then just a rig, don't throw that one to me. I, I don't know that I'll catch it. Um, 
than the regular tennis ball, okay. that too is a lower pressure so that it doesn't fly quite as hot. So patients can kind of progress. That's exactly right. Okay. You have the ability to kind of take them from a beginner stage to a little bit more of a uh, uh, an advanced stage. Yeah. And that I think is going to be important regardless of whether the child has a chronic health care condition or not. Mm -hmm. We all are slow somewhat to learn. Right. You know, so you're able to do some progression. Okay. Now we also have not everybody's outside or playing sport right. types of activities. So just something, a, an adapted piece of equipment, just something as simple as this strip of wood that can be set up and then you have the cards oh look full house <laughs> there you go <laughs> a winning hand yeah so that will allow somebody if they have limited use of one hand one okay. side to be able to set up the cards be able to play so adapted equipment right Really, ranges. it does it ranges right. so much and there's so many activities I mean you wouldn't even you think playing cards you don't think that you need something like that well, and it's the simplest not simplest only thing. a card holder but you know at Walmart you can go get the automatic card shuffler so you <laughs> put true. you know you split the deck in half you put yeah. it in push the button yeah and, and it does. just shuffles it. and it's done it works great that's awesome so that's that's another example of some adapted equipment and I think you know for our last show and tell sure we're talking about this equipment. Yeah. Why don't you give us a little background? Well, the hospital, we registered to be a demonstration site for AMBUX, American Business Clubs. And that organization is kind of like a Rotary or a Lions Club. Okay. You've got people that join it. They're volunteers. And they do fundraisers to be able to provide adapted cycles for children and adults that have disabilities. Okay. So we do, they do require uh, a therapist to do an evaluation. And so we are able to do an evaluation on the child. There are different models, such as this one over here to your left uh, is one of the Pro Series models. This is a foot-powered cycle. They also have hand and foot-powered cycles. And the two types of cycles that Mackenzie and Elena are going to demonstrate are hand cycles. They're two different styles. But the intention is that once we do an evaluation, we can help the family connect with an AMBUX chapter in their area that will help provide some financial support if needed okay. to go ahead and have the child get a cycle. And so when you say hand cycle or foot cycle, that means that hand cycle, they're moving? That's correct. Their upper body? That's correct. Okay. With it, it's how it's propelled. Okay. Uh, in a traditional bicycle, you use your legs to pedal. Right. This bicycle, you, or tricycle actually, because it's got three wheels, you use your legs to pedal. You'll see with these that you're using your hands to pedal. Okay. And there are a number of different models of hand cycles out on the market. Okay. These, we use these a lot because funding a trike like that can be expensive. expensive. Right. And so, you know, some of the other models that are out there that don't have, um, a community service organization to help fund it, right. sometimes it's really hard for families to get that. So this is a good way that the child can be engaged in riding bikes with family and friends. There are organizations out in the community mm -hmm. such as Rise Adapted Sports or Turning Point uh, that they have cycle days on the weekends. You yeah. just sign up. It's free. And so you can take your cycle, your family can take their bikes, and then you guys can ride as That's a family. Great. Which is the ultimate goal, right? to be involved. So if you guys want to show a little bit about how those go, yeah, you'll race at the end, huh? <laughs> Notice how they use the arms. Each one of these models have gears, and then they have hand brakes. Uh, one just has your legs uh, essentially parallel to the okay. ground, whereas the other is more of a traditional chair style, uh, where your legs are then at a right angle but they can be adjusted and, and customized to a certain degree right. on the size of the child. So then a patient of ours that comes in um, for service and then, are, you know, we fit them for this. Like we That's handle correct. that aspect. That's correct. Okay. We have a few of these models here at the hospital. And so we would actually have the child uh, based on measurements, based mm -hmm. on what abilities and what limitations they may have, then we do an evaluation to make sure that they can successfully 
manage the cycle. Okay. If that's the case and you go, oh, that's the right one for you and the mm -hmm. child is so excited about it, then we help fill out the paperwork. Okay. We provide that to the chapter uh, and then the chapter and the parent get together so that they can then obtain the bike. In fact, at the end of this month, um, the Mesquite chapter of Ambux, they're going to be doing a large bike giveaway for many of the kids that um, you know, are going to be receiving them. Many of them are our patients. Many of them aren't our patients that other therapists connected to the chapter that's will great. have. Yeah, and that's something, exciting. you know, after our Facebook Live, we do a recap blog, and that's something that we can put in there to, sure. for resource for sure. our families. Sure. So this has been really great, just learning about all of these these. It's fun, isn't it's it? It's awesome. It's I, fun. I love to play. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So I think to wrap up, we're going to talk about this adaptive expo that's yes. coming up. Yes, yes. In fact... The Flyer. <laughs> the Adapted Sports Expo will be happening on October 28th out at University of Texas at Arlington, UTA. Okay. And essentially, that's going to be an opportunity for, for people to come, be able to participate mm -hmm. in a wide range of adapted sports and activities. And they're going to have a number of Paralympic athletes there. They're going to do a panel. They'll also have healthcare providers there giving information. They'll have different booths that people can gain information from. Yeah. So it's really meant to be, well, it's an expo. Mm -hmm. You know, it's meant to be an information, but a fun day of activities. Yeah. They'll have food, they'll have drinks and stuff for families. Um, but some of the activities, I'm going to have to refer to my notes. I mean, it's a wide range yeah. from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I know that we're, this is in conjunction with UT Southwestern. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. And so they'll have like bocce and rugby and fencing. A lot of people don't realize you do wheelchair fencing. Right. Yeah. They table tennis, wheelchair basketball, power soccer, soccer or hockey. That too is from usually a power chair. That's why they call it power. Yeah. Um, adapted throwing. They'll have track and field. They'll have swimming, uh, dance, sitting volleyball, golf, uh, tennis, fitness. A lot of times people don't think about weight lifting and fitness training mm -hmm. exactly but it's so important that individuals with chronic health care conditions right. maintain activities and fitness levels which also includes nutrition right so um, they There's also something here for everybody there really things. is yeah. there really is whether it's goal ball which is for individuals who have visual impairments you know billiards cycling the hand cycling and again they will have panels of individuals to be able to go and talk to so it's going to be That's a fun awesome. time nine to three october 28th absolutely Absolutely. Awesome. Well, this has been great. We've thank so you. enjoyed getting to know you and showcasing your department. It's just been awesome. So thank you for joining oh, us my today. Pleasure. My pleasure. And next week we'll be back. SRH Access will be out at our Frisco campus to give you an update on that. Thank you.